Hi everyone, the message I want to bring you tonight is somewhat about um, what we in the new year often do. I find that there are terms that in the Bible, they create like a, a religious mindset. Um, and generally the Bible is extremely practical. It's not really, uh, we often think of the terms uh, that you'll see sometimes in the scripture um, that can have a real, real religious uh, phrase. <clears throat> but if you look at those words, they don't really mean the phrase that they kind of have become churches or tradition can kind of create uh, meanings to words in our mind and it's somewhat helpful to get your way around that so uh, one of the words that I find is like that is this word that I just want to touch on just it's not the biggest world ideal in the world um, but the biggest things that are going on in the world right now they can touch on this word in particular so the lockdowns and the worry and the restrictions and uh, people can get very upset. How's God going to move? Um, you know, is God limited moving right now in our time and world in which we live? Which obviously we all know the answer is no. But the word that um, I want to just touch on, just a sprinkle a little bit. It's not like the biggest thing in the world, but just understand what this word means is confession. I think that's an exceedingly religious word now and it doesn't really mean what it's become to mean in the Bible what it means is very uh, it's not peculiar that word is kind of like a religious word now uh, but the real meaning of the word it's very specific it just means a statement said with resolve that's all it means it's a it means a like a parable or a statement said with resolve. Now, a better way of understanding that is like kind of like a new, new Year's resolution. And I think the point with a confession is it's kind of like a New Year's resolution. There are people that stick with it and there's people that don't. So it's like, I'm gonna lose weight. You know, three days later, we're eating spaghetti and we're having the bowl of Cheerios before bed and three desserts. Like resolve with a new year's resolution really differs from person to person and all the word confession means it's a statement of resolve and i want to just give you a couple scriptures about um one of the things that's just important it's maybe a good thing to note i don't know why um, statements of resolve when it comes to faith uh, lots of times people really um, say these statements of resolve or what are called confessions there's an awful lot of teaching in the Bible. And in times of trouble, those statements uh, have a real big impact on your life. So statements of resolve, the, the Greek word confession means a phrase or statement said with your voice with resolve. So why is this important to recognize that? Well, a lot of time we think of confession it's like this religious term and it just it really kind of cuts out in our mind when we read it or talk about it we're just like uh, what, what it has no value like a lot of people are getting away from what we would call tradition but that's not a statement said with resolve or a parable or statement said with resolve is what confession means in the greek language of the bible that's literally the meaning of the so you don't want to, it's like you, what you're saying here is a statement said or a parable said with resolve. It's not like you're standing on the outside looking in saying, I believe God can do this. When you make a statement said with resolve, it means you're putting yourself into the, the comment, into the position and saying, yes, I, I don't just agree with this, but I push forward for this with who I am. So that's what confession means. Now, there's a whole line of talk in the Bible about this, and it's not like the end of the world or the beginning of the world, but just read this, these statements with that in mind, that it's a statement or parable said, spoken with resolve is the way we would, uh, that's what the word confession means. Hebrews 3 1 it says consider the apostle and high priest of our confession 
So Jesus is the high priest, but it's interesting. It's not just that he's our high priest. It's also that he's the high priest of our confession. So Jesus as high priest, um, which this whole argument in um, Hebrews is about, there's something, yes, we all know he's the high priest of us because we're believers in Jesus, but he's also the high priest of what's called our confession. So it's distinct to a statement said with resolve. That's when Jesus becomes high priest. Hebrews 4.14, uh, let us hold fast to our confession. So our statement or parable said, said, spoken with resolve. In Hebrews 10, 21, having a high priest over the house of God, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. So it's it just, it's very, you know, sometimes we can get very bland and say, well, confession is just, I believe in Jesus, like the Apostles' Creed or some statement. That's not exactly the way this is put. So it's things that you believe in your heart. I think churches can make it that, but that's limited in the scope of what it's saying. There are definitely times where you will, you will have something put in your heart, put there by God. He will say it to you, or he, it's God that says it to you. You believe it. And then there is a place in the Bible where you say it. It's like with resolve. So there's lots of times where you'll say things that God has kind of, you know, spoken to you. But it's not just that you're repeating it. It's that you then invest yourself in it and you say it with resolve. So it's like it does matter whether this happens or not. Lots of times we get into trouble uh, as Christians when we um, make up things that we just want to happen. And I think that when we touch on this topic, a lot of people resist talking about this stuff and they often resist certain types of elements of faith based on they just want that to happen. That person, that's their will. Now there, I would, I, I can't hazard a glance. It would be very subjective. What would be the number of people that are Christians that you've seen that just when they said it was the Lord, it was just them wanting something. I mean, we all can probably think of instances of that, and we've all heard of it. But in the Bible, there's times where it isn't the person, it is God. And I would hazard to say that there's a percentage of people that I know, they say they feel the Lord spoke to them. And I would say they definitely heard the Lord. Now, what it's saying is a confession simply means that that word isn't restricted to just intellect. You believe it. And once you believe it, you say it with resolve. Now, resolve isn't forcing it down the middle and saying, I'm gonna push this through. So what does it mean? Because that, that would be like pride or, or um, pushiness. Like, I'm gonna make this happen. God spoke it to me. You know, there's an old scripture in Zechariah that says, not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. How, how with resolve then, what is resolve over things God speaks to you? Because a lot of us, we think, okay, I can think of times where maybe I saw somebody that was, they wanted something to happen. They thought it was the Lord. They kind of made it happen. They pushed it through. Um, but there's obviously the, the flesh, but then there's obviously times where it isn't the flesh. So many times, you know, people will maybe say, I think the Lord maybe spoke to me. And they, and you know, you'll let it grow on you. Is that the Lord? Is it not the Lord? And then you're like, I think this is the Lord. So when you've kind of gone through your process, and I don't know what your process is, but many times each Christian has a way they're like, hmm, that is the Lord talking to me. When you've heard something, you don't want to resist it. You don't want to limit it. And that's what the Bible says. So you want to confess it with your mouth, it talks about here. When God gives you a statement that is said with resolve, that's a confession. Now, a lot of times we're just like, well, that's a, just about believing in Jesus, but it's not necessarily true. Faith is this unusual thing that it, it's so not easily defined. The Bible simply says and gives us 
there, there's only one word in the Bible that's defined like in a dictionary, and it's the word faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Um, it's, it's an underlying basis is another way of saying that word. It is a real thing, and it, there's two other distinct things. It's in the present, so when you have faith, it's the here and now. It affects hope. Um, it says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, these three things remain faith, hope, and love. They're distinct, faith and hope. It's not the same thing. So a confession simply is another way of saying um, when it comes to faith or hope, it's a way that you, um, with resolve, say out of the overflow of your heart, you're believing something, and you actually speak it with resolve and you're like okay i really feel god put this in my heart it's the underlying basis or it's the thing you don't see with your eye but it's faith in your heart um, faith is the substance of things not seen so there's times where you will feel something and it isn't you and it's not you pushing but then how do you have resolve when you don't push so you definitely want not to belate and beat it down. You just, you want to listen. You want to listen very carefully to God. And then you want to invest your heart. You, you, you speak a sentence, you say it out loud. That's what a confession is. Now, because of the negative connotations, we think of people who kind of push what they wanted through and said it was God. Sometimes people just discount the whole thing. But I, I would say don't do that, especially in times of COVID. I just would say, A, receive what God is speaking over your life. God will be saying some things. You want to speak out in accordance with what God is saying about you. Lots of times you can think of the, like, you know, sometimes you're just like, I'm not a bad, like, uh, I have been forgiven of my sins. And yes, I've been forgiven of my sins. The enemy often tries to put you down. Times like today are very, it's very easy to be discouraged. Extremely extremely hard to fight your thoughts, for instance. Where you might have 50 thoughts fill your mind. Something bad happens and you have all these thoughts pointing in the wrong direction. And then God says something into your heart that goes in the opposite direction of all the other 50 thoughts. And you're like, I think that was God. I think that the outcome God spoke over this is very different than the way I'm feeling about it or what the enemy would say into my mind in a tough time. So I, I would just say, be very aware of that. As a matter of fact, you see that spelled out in the Bible. Uh, lots of times the Bible says things like, uh, God says, uh, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways, declares the Lord. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my thoughts above your thoughts. So there's a contrast between God's thoughts and our thoughts, and we don't necessarily think God's thoughts naturally. Many times you'll have 50 thoughts, think in one direction. God puts another thought in the opposite direction. God is the one speaking that, and it's hard to accept it, but you need to recognize when it is the Lord reaching to you. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. That is often then singled down to what the plan might be in your personal instance. And when that comes upon you, it's, it's so hard to hold on to that. So having resolve on that, it's like you want to you wanna take that thing that God says to you about you, about what he has for you, about today. Because faith is always about today. Hope's about tomorrow. Faith's about today. God would certainly spoke this into my heart and I, I, I am going to make it. I do need to not give up. I need to keep praying. I need to keep believing. So many times you can find your own mind belittling or bringing you down where God is building you up in the opposite direction. And your thoughts would be the 50 that say this and God's one little phrase is going in the other way. And so having a confession, Jesus, it says, is the high priest of our confession of faith and our hope. So what you find is that when you don't have a lot of strength even, 
Maybe God just spoke something solid to you. And, and the enemy is the one rattling all kinds of things off. There's actually a Bible verse about that. It says um, that you will condemn every voice that rises in judgment against you. There's times where the enemy's just like nailing you and saying, yeah, you have no hope, you have no, God doesn't have a plan. This, that, the other, is these voices speaking against you. Whereas God speaks for you. And I'm not saying he speaks for you like you can't speak. I'm saying he's saying something positive about you, but this other, these other voices or whatever are saying this very negative. And it's saying, I'm gonna give you the authority to, to rise up and condemn these voices that are speaking against you. So don't have a very limited view of what God can say, but also recognize that when God speaks something for, for you, it's so interesting to me that, that Jesus, it says, is the high priest of our confession, that we need to keep fighting for that. Hold fast to the confession without wavering, confess the hope that God has. What that tells me is what I just said. There's times where I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight over what God is really saying about me or my situation. Ephesians chapter 6 says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in high places. There's times where your mind and the, thing, the enemy, or maybe even people will say things, but it's backed up by something far beyond just a person. It's a darkness or, 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 or something trying to deliver a, a blow against you that is not just a discouragement, it's the real attack of the enemy. And that confession, it says, Jesus is the high priest of our confession. I just want to encourage you, don't be afraid to speak out in alignment with what God speaks over you. Don't be surprised if God speaks to you something of positive value in the time that we're in right now. Getting you from where you need to be to where God wants you to be may involve God letting you in on what he has in store for your life on bringing you hope because that's what it says i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future to give you hope that's amazing hebrews 21 says we have a high priest over the house of god let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering so if god gives you an insight into the hope or the faith that he has for your life. You say, what do you mean faith for my life? Jesus said, if you have the faith of God, you can say to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and it'll do it. There are times where we don't even have faith for ourselves. God puts faith, his faith in our heart. That's what's called gift faith. That's why Jesus said it grammatically the way he said it. There's times where even I can't get through the circumstance that I'm in. Are you in anything like that today? You can get in a groove in COVID where it's like, man, I don't know if I can make it, you know? And it's not necessarily your own doing. But God has the authority to grant you a gift. And he'll tell you sometimes what he's saying about you. And he wants you to realize this is true. It's, the enemy is going to tell you, nope. And he's going to rise in judgment against the very thing God spoke to you. But if it is, it don't be limited and think, mm, do I, you know, confess it, believe it. Jesus said, you can throw the mountain into the sea if you believe the faith of God. It, it's, not the, it's not that we have to have enormous faith at all times. There are instances we can't get through it. The Bible tells us in the, uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. One of the gifts is the gift of faith. That means it's a faith that doesn't come from me. It doesn't belong to me. It comes from the Holy Spirit. So instead of me saying, I'm just going to quit, I can't do it anymore, God gives me a gift of faith to get me through it. And in those moments, you want to align your voice, your words, your tongue, and say, I believe what God is saying here is true. God is giving me this gift of faith. I can't shift through everything that I'm fighting right now but God, you gave me the authority that came from you. I'm gonna believe it and I'm going to confess it, that it's, this is just God for your glory. 
that seems, that's a hard thing to do. I don't know why it's, that's a tough one in COVID. It's not tough to do. It's no different to receive that gift now during COVID as it was before, but I will tell you it makes a difference. And it makes a difference with regards to your hope. A lot of people that have no hope right now, it's because they see everything with, with, uh, withering up in the world or perhaps what they could do or they used to do. But when God gives you a gift of faith, it rekindles hope. Allow God to rekindle hope in you. Breathe in that truth of what God is speaking to you. And then with your mouth, it says Jesus is the high priest of our confession. It's an amazing thing. God gives me a gift of victory. Another way of putting that is, is a, the way I'd put it is, a gift of faith is victory. <laughs> That's what it is. A gift of faith is victory. God's not putting you through this time. He's maybe allowing you to go through something, but when he gives you the victory, often it comes through him saying, a gift of faith, receive the victory and speak it out. I'm not, I'm not trying to put you through like a mental exercise where you envision what you want. I'm saying there are times where God will complete the work. He who began a good work in me is able to complete it. Why would that have to be written into the Bible? Because there's times where you think it's something's, something's started and now you're stumped. You're like, okay, I thought God was working and now I can't finish it. There's times where you need an extra ump from God to finish what he started. This doesn't mean that you're wrong or God didn't know what he was doing. He began it. He will complete it. He's going to see it through. And he's made, an, he's made a power of the Holy Spirit available to help you get there. I guess I'm just saying, confess with your mouth. Come alongside, even with your words. Now, what I mean by that confession isn't a religious term. It just means a phrase that you speak with resolve. Or maybe you just say, yeah, I am. God is able to do this. Yeah, I think God can complete this. Yeah, I, I have a sense. I have a resolve in me from inside of me. I believe that God is able. And that get, that's, that's, that's getting you somewhere. The resolve put behind it is part of you. It's like the 10 lepers were healed by Jesus. Nine of them just took the miracle and kind of had a good time. One of them came back and said, thank you. You know, the investment of yourself, thanking Jesus for what he's done for you, praising him, don't limit it just to say, hey, that's kind of cool that God would perform the miracle. Take your mouth, praise him, thank him, resist the devil, the Bible says, and he will flee. And so what you want to do when resolve is that you are really invested in your makeup in this. Yes, God, I want this completed. Yes, God, only through you. Yes, God, I'm going to stay and I'm going to be faithful to you. I'm going to believe that you, if you started this, it's not like you've left me out in the lurch now. COVID is a way of um, making people think that God's not going to finish what he began. But the Bible teaches me an, in, in a strange way that my confession can kind of fit in the middle. And this is the little, it's not a huge deal, but it's important to just mention where you see God started to do something here and he wants to complete it here. That little transition point between the two, you, you can get fixed in your tongue. Yes, God can do this. You want that as a response. You believe it in your heart. Not just that God is a better day for you, but God can do it. He can throw the mountain into the sea. God's put me here for a reason. God said these things about me and they are going to come to pass. And I may need a little bit more from the Lord, but he who began a good work in me is able to complete it. And I'm going to adjust myself in my heart, in my words, no, not just words, in my resolve. Because a confession isn't just words. It's a phrase stay saying something with resolve. 
Sometimes you need the resolve that literally comes from a gift of faith. But however you get that resolve, you say, no, it's not over. I'm going to trust in the Lord and I'm going to say it out loud. Don't let the enemy try and quiet you down with regards to your resolve to see God's kingdom come. Remember what Jesus said, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus taught us when, the, when he taught us how to pray, he taught us to pray with resolve that God's kingdom that God has up there would come to pass down here. So speak with resolve in the kingdom. Speak with resolve over the things that God is speaking into you. Speak with resolve saying, God, you put this here. You want to bring it to completion. God, I just pray that you give me the strength to do what you want me to do, the part that I'm to play. I believe. I receive what you're saying, Lord, and I come alongside it. I invest in it. In Jesus' name, I pray this for you, for your new year. In Christ's name, amen.